are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again today. We have a special guest. We have Marina Chapelsky. She has an amazing website where we learn about her career being law. It's ChapelskyLaw.com. And as a managing attorney, we're going to learn a little bit about her backstory, what inspired her to get into this field. And also, everyone has an amazing story of, of dedication and overcoming, you know, our chapters in life that are not always so high. So first and foremost, Marina, thank you for your time. How are you doing? Thank you. Hi. How are you, everyone? Nice to be here. I appreciate you being here. So with you being an award-winning immigration and family law attorney, kind of paint the picture for the audience. What inspires you to take this uh, career path? Well, I'm a first-generation immigrant myself. I came from Ukraine here when I was 12 in 1989. And I went through immigration with my parents and all our friends and family, just like all our clients uh, have. And I've also, I've also gone through divorce myself. So I personally survived those two event in my life, immigration and divorce. And that is why I feel so connected to these two fields, because I know how complicated it is when you don't have all the information, when you don't know what tomorrow will bring. And I can help people now in those two fields, get their life in order, legalize in the United States, become, um, you know, legal, become uh, a green card holder, become a U.S. citizen. That's all people want. They want to work here legally, pay taxes. They want to be able to go places and not be afraid of being deported. And on the family side, they want to resolve their divorce and move on. So that's what we help them with. And with you being the CEO of, of your business, uh, you can go to the website, ChapelskyLaw.com. Tell us a little bit about your Chapelsky Law Group. And you kind of did sprinkle uh, through some of the details, but give the audience a picture of um, everything that you do day in, day out. Uh, so I started out uh, by myself in a small room. Uh, just I couldn't even afford to rent an entire office when I finished law school. And I went out on my own pretty quickly within a year after that. Uh, when I was pregnant with my daughter, my oldest daughter. Um, and now we have uh, three attorneys in the office, including myself. We have paralegals, both in person and remotely, working with us from different states. We have, uh, you know, legal assistants. We have a whole marketing team. Uh, we have, a, like, a sales team. So it's become a company almost it's a law firm with different departments that does different things and the end result is to get people to know more about us to know we exist to become a client i i also have a big social media present i do a lot of videos where i educate people i educate people about basic and complicated topics relating about the immigration law also i do a live every week about immigration news, anything in the United States that relates to immigration, because there's so much of it. It's a really uh, popular news topic. And I just like to educate people as much as I can about immigration law and family law, too. And, and since you do focus on family law and immigration law, what are some of the misconceptions that people may have with immigration? with immigrants and how, you know, they do need uh, legal services to, to help them with their journey and becoming, you know, part of the American dream? Well, when you need to legalize in the United States, it's a very vulnerable time and place in your life because it's very complicated. And immigration law is really one of the most complicated and ever-changing areas of law that I ever came across. And, you know, I have colleagues in every area of law that you can think of. I went to school here, you know, I grew up here. 
I have friends who do employment law and personal injury law and even maritime, you know, admiral law and contract law. And this is the most complex. It changes with every administration. People are always like reeling from the news. When people talk about Florida right now and what uh, Governor DeSantis started with this SB 18, uh, I'm sorry, 17, 18 uh, law that everyone is talking about now against uh, quote unquote illegal immigrants, most people don't even understand what it is to be an illegal immigrant or know the difference between a legal immigrant and an illegal immigrant. And first of all, people cannot even be illegal. But the bottom line is it's very complex and people are so vulnerable and so upset and so like uh, disappointed already with the system. And it's really a challenge to get them to trust us, to convince them that we are here to help you. We'll hold your hand through this process. It's kind of the same thing with divorce. People have heard rumors and like their friends have told them about divorce. But the reality is, unless you talk to an attorney about your specific case with your specific judge and situation, you don't know anything. So if those two areas are very complex. And people are like at the lowest time in their life, really, uh, when dealing with those issues. So we help them the best way we know how. We do things one day at a time, (laughs) ethically. We fight for them. We fight for their rights. And we try to make things work for them. It's not always about what you want. It's sometimes about what you need and how we can get there. You made a good point about every case is different. You know, every case is unique. So with that point being said, let's dive into the divorce topic, if you will. So when it comes to divorce, uh, divorce proceedings, how do you approach helping parents uh, separate while ensuring the best interests of their children, if they have children? First of all, with divorce, it's uh, actually similar with immigration. Uh, when they come to our office and they tell us and we see all their documents and what they tell us are their their most um, you know pressing problems, the first thing we do is we are honest with them and we tell them what to expect, what's not going to happen, and uh, sometimes just putting them in the right frame of mind, reframe their thinking. You know, for example, a lot of times the mothers get uh, you know when they come to us very upset. They say, well. Uh, my husband doesn't pay child support. I don't want him to see the kids anymore and things like that. So we'll say, look, uh, we'll get the child support resolved for you as quickly as we can. But in the meanwhile, you cannot stop the father from seeing the kid. And if you do, he might go to the precinct, to the police, and get the police to come and force you to let him see the child. Things like that, you know, when people are like sort of in their own version of reality a lot of times with both immigration and divorce, and we educate them. It's all about educating them about what's happening, you know? So we're like, look, we're on your side. We want you to, quote, unquote, win, but there's kids to worry about. There's being, you know, like, you know, there's financial considerations, but also there's the right thing to do by law in this state and in this county. So there's a lot of, like, kind of balls we have to juggle as attorneys, And some of it is, you know, sometimes your own client acting, sometimes not always in their own best interest and doing things you don't want them to do, even though you told them not to do them. So it's a challenge, you know, but we love it. This is the work we love to do. We love to help people. That's why we're here. Once again, talking to our our guest today, she is the CEO and founder of Sapelsky Law Group, uh, Marina Sapelsky. And when it comes to your, your law practice, can you tell us a little bit about where you're from to to give us a picture? Because being a licensed attorney in New Jersey since 2002 and New York State since 2003, you also are licensed in, in two highest level federal appeals courts. Tell us a little bit about that as well. Uh, I came from Ukraine. I went to high school in Brooklyn, New York, in a really bad neighborhood. Um, but you know, I overcame it. It was good to learn about America and the diversity and the different problems that poverty brings to all of us. I was part of that. Uh, we were very poor. We came with nothing and we didn't even have citizenship of any country because when we left Soviet Union, 
Soviet Union took our citizenship away, so we were stateless. So we came here with no citizenship, not even a passport. Some people come here with a passport. We didn't even have a passport. Um, I got a green card, and then I became a citizen by taking the exam by myself. Um, I went to NYU. I was going to be a doctor at the time. I want, you know, I really always loved science and problem solving and medicine. But somehow I really fell in love with law when I was working, like sort of during college, just to, you know, pay for books and tuition and things like that. And somehow I fell in love with law. It was very unexpected. I had um, concerns that English is not my first language. I have an accent. I was never a good public speaker, believe it or not. <laughs> um, and through work and, um, you know, getting new colleagues in the legal field, they convinced me that this is something I can do and I should do. And uh, I took the LSAT. I did really well. And then I went to a really good law school at Fordham University in Manhattan. And uh, I finished law school and I didn't know what to do right away after law school. And somehow I ended up on my own um, because I didn't, you know, I didn't fit into like the box of corporate law or anything else. And when I started to practice on my own, I very quickly like stumbled into immigration law and realized I really can do well in this area because it's like I really understand it well. I get it. And I also connect to the clients on the highest level. And um, I really lo like I, I loved it. And since I loved it, I started doing more and more and more of it. And uh, the same thing happened with, uh, with the family law. And the reason that I started to do family law is because a lot of the abuse cases I started to do early in my practice for immigration always involved orders of protection, divorces, child custody, uh, visitation, um, child support. And it, it made sense to learn about that because people are whole beings. And it was very holistic, you know, to understand both immigration and their family law, like divorce and orders of protection problems, you know. So it made sense that we started to practice in both of those areas. And uh, we did more, like, you know, we started with, when we just started, with, we did more simple cases, things we could handle. But we don't bite off more than we chew. And over the years, and I've been practicing since 2003, um, it's been 20 years, we got into more and more complex cases. Uh, I got admitted in higher courts. We started winning. We got like we kind. Of, I kind of developed my own method of filing cases, you know, and submitting documents and organizing the evidence and preparing clients. So uh, it works, you know. USCIS and the other agencies they appreciate how we do like such a you know really uh, deep. I would say like deep dive into the paperwork and writing the briefs. Uh, fighting for clients. Sometimes I get help with like, we need an expert in something. We never hesitate to get an expert to write something for us to win. You know, I'm very much focused on the end result of winning somebody's case. It's not just a case. I totally understand this is somebody's life we're changing. And I'm very much aware of the responsibility that this job brings with it. And I think we're handling it pretty good with dignity with understanding and just working hard, doing things ethically and, um, you know, being good lawyers. And that's how you do it, one case at a time. And with you being an immigrant yourself uh, from the, you said the Ukraine, and now you're yeah. fighting and helping those in need, what is the first step for someone who is dealing with the whole process of immigration what is the first step that they can take if they have questions to ask someone like yourself so that they can learn what they can or can't do with their case? The first step should always be a consultation with a lawyer. You should never try to, uh, you know, allow people who are not licensed attorneys or specialists in immigration law uh, talk to you and give you any advice. Because unless you practice in this field every single day, you don't know what's happening in this field. And unfortunately, I see a lot of immigrants become victims of like notarios and paralegal services or consulting services, quote unquote consulting, who are not attorneys. Attorneys don't run these 
uh, you know, shops. Attorneys have a law firm. When you go to speak to an attorney, you speak to somebody educated in the field and somebody who's practicing in court, practicing before USCI. It's constantly in touch and in a conversation with the government agency. If you're not in the conversation on the same level like attorneys are with a government agency, it's really hard to legalize. Statistics say less than 1% of people who have an interest in immigrating to the United States ever get green cards. Can you imagine from everyone that has an interest in the world of immigrating here, nine-tenths of 1%, less than 1%, actually end up being legal and getting a green card. So um, part of that is people sometimes don't want to pay a lawyer. I get that. I get it. It's not cheap, but it's an investment in your future. It's an investment in your kids growing up here, going to schools in America, getting jobs where you don't need to know people and you don't need to pay a bribe. You know, this is our democratic system. One of that, uh, uh, one of the, you know, advantages of having an attorney is when they help you, they really do an educated and professional job. And the first step should always do to be the first step should always be to do a consultation with an immigration attorney. Not only that, sometimes I tell people, look, if somebody does employment visas, they're not going to know much about your asylum case. So you need to find someone who concentrates like us in abuse cases or asylum cases or family unification cases. It's not like just anyone either. Read online reviews, read their websites, just like you said, Chappelskilo.com. See how people are educating you. If you like this attorney, you like the way they speak to you, uh, you know, from social media, the videos, the education materials, then you should hire them. You also, on your website, ChapelskiLaw.com, you, you have a Q&A page. What yeah. are some of the most frequent asked questions? I know I asked one about what's the first step for someone who, who needs your help. But what's some of the most popular questions that people usually have for you? How long do I have to wait in my case time? That is the most popular question. People always want to know how long to wait and um, if they qualify for asylum or do they qualify for a green card this way or this way. You know, they usually will read about different case types and they kind of know a little bit, but they don't know too much yet. So they want to know, number one, how long? And number two, if I qualify for a green card through some way. That's good information for, for those who, who may need it. Now, if someone wants to talk to you, are you able to talk to anyone that needs information from you? Or do they have to uh, meet certain criteria? Um, first they call our office and we have like a team of reception, you know, reception team. They talk to them, make sure they schedule a consultation. We can pretty much talk to anyone that has an immigration question or a potential case. We don't always take every case. For example, if they tell us openly that they're lying about something, there's immigration fraud involved, uh, some, some story was made up. We don't take those cases ever. Uh, but if they have a legitimate case, a legitimate claim, we'll take it. We'll, we'll talk to them and then we'll take the case. I think people deserve a fighting chance and we give them that. And what advice would you give generally to anybody who is considering to pursue the idea of wanting to come over to the United States legally, of course? What's some general advice you would give to them before they just get up and move? Um, what you see on TV and social media is very different from the reality of life here in America. I don't want to be like a Debbie Downer or depressed anyone, but life here is really hard. Americans are obsessed with work, number one. Uh, money certainly doesn't fall on your head when you get here. You don't just go pick it on trees. Uh, people work really hard, long hours to make money and to make ends meet. Yes, people make more money in America as compared to other countries, but things are much more expensive here too. So 
Um, don't think that, you know, it's such a like a land of golden goose, of the golden goose, number one. Number two, understand what I just said. Of less than 1% of people who ever express interest, th- these are official statistics, less than 1% of people who are interested in immigrating here ever become legalized. This is from the Cato organization that does the official immigration research, talks to Congress, Congress and U.S. Supreme Court, draw their numbers from this organization. So believe these numbers. These are real statistics. That means to legalize here, you're going to go through a lot. It's going to be super hard. It's, you know, at this point, to legalize in America, it is super, super hard. You're going to go through filters upon filters and filters. They make it hard to come here. I feel like harder than any other country in the world. It's not just how I feel. It's statistics speak for themselves. Uh, so be prepared for that. But if you make it here, you can make it anywhere. It's true. You know, um, if you find your place here and you can legalize here, your life is going to be really good. Anyway. And that's the truth. I love this country. It's my home. I believe it's a wonderful country, the best in the world. And with that said, those listening, you being a CEO of Sapelsky Law Group and your knowledge of immigration and family law as well. What are some of the things people listening could do to contribute to uh, a solution? Because I don't want to overgeneralize it, but contribute to a better process or helping those who are trying to immigrate here. You know, what are some of the things that the public can do, and especially when it comes to the people that re- represent the people? How can we voice our opinions or just contribute something positive to finding solutions? So the people who are here already, who are legal, you know, legal citizens and you and so on, green card holders, you should always educate yourself first about the processes that immigrants have to go through to get here. Uh, don't make, uh, you know, superficial assumptions. Uh, don't start talking about illegal immigrants taking your jobs and things like that. There's so many jobs in the United States that only immigrants are interested in and that uh, people who are born here never would consider. And, 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 you know, they're low paid, they're really hard work, they're in the worst condition. We need immigrants like, you know, like the deserts need the rain. We cannot survive in this country without immigrants. Immigrants make this country great on every level. Medicine, every field has a lot of immigrants in medicine, lots of nurses, nursing aides, home attendants are immigrants. Uh, Construction, you'll see immigrants in every construction site. Farming, agriculture, restaurants, uh, law even. (laughs) Look at me, I'm an immigrant too. Uh, In every field, there's a lot of immigrants. Everyone wants a chance to be here and work for it. Most immigrants are not here to take any freebies. Most immigrants are not here to get public assistance and sit on the neck of the American society. Most immigrants, if you talk to them, want to work here legally, pay taxes, be legal, travel twice a year to their country for a vacation for a week to see their parents, come back and keep working, doing whatever they do and raise their kids. So educate yourself, talk to your congressman, talk to your senator, Talk to your governor. Don't pass these draconic laws like Florida just passed. This is ridiculous. If you attack immigrants, you're losing the best thing about this country, our diversity, our respect from people coming from different places, looking differently from you, eating different food. So what? It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. We are so unique, our country, and that we accept this and we love this diversity and we thrive because of this diversity. Look at what's happening right now. The Indian, the Indian immigrants, right? The people from India, the all the immigration categories for India are so backed up that a company that wants to bring an Indian programmer, for example, here, they would have to wait like 14 years. That's ridiculous. What employer wants to work uh, with somebody they have to wait for for 14 years? 
You know, we we might not even be alive in 14 years. Who knows? We might have another epidemic or whatever. So the point is, it has to work, and our system doesn't work. So please educate yourself. Please talk to your congressman. Your voice counts. Vote for people that have good ideas for fixing our immigration system. Once again, this is Aubrey Focus at Radio talking to our guest, Marina Chapelsky. You can go to her website, ChapelskyLaw.com. Want to say again, thanks uh, to you, Marina, taking time talking to Aubrey Focus Radio today. Thank you so much for having me.